Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, we celebrate Palm Sunday. I hope everybody is having a beautiful day because this is the beginning of a very special time in the life of Christians. It is the most important time in the Christian's life. Uh, what Jesus teaches us this week is just uh, forever cements our relationship with him and gives us salvation and eternal life. So it's a very, very important message that we're going to study this week. So if you remember a couple weeks ago, we learned how Jesus taught his disciples and how he gave us a model to use when we pray. And it seems like these days we've been talking about prayer a lot. And that's, that's a good thing because Jesus gave us the power of prayer. He made it possible for us to have a conversation directly with our Heavenly Father. And we have that conversation. That conversation is called prayer. That's what prayer is. When we go to our Heavenly Father with our needs, with our celebrations, with our thanks and praise, that's what prayer is. And today, we're going to be studying about the crucifixion mm -hmm. and why that is a horrific event and that was very painful for Jesus and for his disciples. It is that single event that gives us eternal life. Why Jesus suffered physically and emotionally was strained through this, he knew he was doing God's will. And it teaches us to do God's will is not always an easy path. And sometimes it is led with great difficulty. In this case, it led Jesus to willingly give his life because these events were all known to him. Nothing came as a surprise. And But he was so in tune with his heavenly father that he gladly laid down his life for remission of our sins. And that's what we're studying today. It is a tragic event, a horrible death, but through that we have eternal life with our heavenly father. So we're going to talk about in this lesson how Remember, Jesus was betrayed by one of his disciples. After that, after he was betrayed by Judas, he was arrested and he had to go to court and a judge found him guilty, even though he didn't have anything to be guilty of. And the religious leaders who were part of that, that trial said that Jesus had to be killed. And we're going to learn that when he died, the earth shook and the rocks were split in two, and tombs were opened, and the veil in the temple was torn in two, and that's, that's, a, that's a visible sign that the barrier between us and God had been torn in two. And the interesting thing about the veil, mm -hmm. it was not torn from the bottom up, it was torn from the top down. And that's very important, because that shows that God did it. God made it happen. Somebody didn't grab the bottom of it, pull it apart. God divided that veil. And through Christ's death and resurrection, we now have direct access to the Heavenly Father. The, the last point we want to make about this lesson is that those who were there with Jesus and there after his death and witnessed all of those things around this, this season they were so filled with awe that they knew it was it was it kind of sealed their understanding that he truly was the son of god and that's what our lesson teaches us today we see where our disciples uh, fail initially they run they hide mm -hmm. they're human uh, you know they're just human beings and uh, they were afraid for their life but we see how Jesus, as he spent 40 days on the earth after his uh, 
resurrection, how he taught the disciples then and gave them the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit strengthened their ability to be great witnesses for Jesus. Now the things we're going to read today are all going to be from, the verses we're going to read are all from the book of Matthew. But this account, you can read this, and you should read this, in all four of the Gospels. All four. We chose the, the verses in Matthew to read. Uh, would you lead us in prayer? Would I would. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with such gratitude and so much praise and awe. Jesus, the sacrifice that you made for us shows us how small we are in the big picture. It shows us how awesome God is in the big picture. And it, you, it shows us how, in spite of the fact that we are just one person among millions and trillions and billions of people, we can go to God. And we can go to God with our wants and our wishes and our desires and our fears. And we can go directly to him. And that was only made possible by the sacrifice of you, Jesus. And we are so thankful for that. We are so humbled that you loved us so much to do that for us. So please make us be alert and listen to the scriptures this morning. Help us to be good teachers this morning. And help us to always, always know and appreciate and remember and thank you for this sacrifice that you made for us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, starting in Matthew 26, mm -hmm. verse 1. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, that he said to his disciples, You know that after two days is the Passover, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be uh, crucified. Then the chief priests, scribes, and elders of the people assembled at the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas and plotted to take Jesus by trickery and kill him. But they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. We're going to jump down now to verses 14 through 22. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him thirty pieces of silver. So from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying to him, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When evening had come, he sat down with the twelve. Now, as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and each one of them began to say to him, Lord, is it I? So we see that Christ is telling the disciples, one, that he's going to be betrayed. Mm -hmm. Who is going to betray him? One of the twelve. And the betrayal will lead to his crucifixion. So there was no surprises. This was all in God's plan. Before anybody was born, this was part of God's plan because he knew mankind, given free will, would need a savior. So we continue on in 26, still in Matthew, we're dropping down verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples. Take it, this is my, and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. And on to verse, verses 57 to 61. 
And those who had laid hold of Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and elders were assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance to the high priest's courtyard, and he went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests, the elders, and the council all sought false testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Even though many false witnesses came forward, they found none. But at last, two false witnesses came forward and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. Now we see Peter following, and this is where Peter denies Christ three times. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told Peter that he would do this before it happened. And, the, and he denied him three times before, uh, in this case, chicken crowed or rooster crowed. And uh, it's just again where we have a deep understanding that nothing happens in this world that God hasn't planned. God is in total control. He is the creator of this earth, this universe, and of us. So now we go on to uh, Matthew 27 starting in verse 1. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then we drop down to verses 11 through 14. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing of their charges. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he answered him not one word. So the governor marveled greatly. Verses 27 to 29, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered all, the whole garrison around him. They went into a big room, a big auditorium, and gathered the whole garrison, or the, the guards, around him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And when they had twisted a crown made out of thorns and put it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They also at the same time beat him with a whip. And this was a long leather whip that had many pieces of leather, not one single piece. And at the end of each strip of leather was either a piece of metal or a piece of bone or a piece of stone. It could have been any of the three. But it would really do severe injury Hurt to, very bad. Uh, to, to Christ. And so Christ bled. But again, remember why this is a horrific event. It is through the shedding of his blood that we have remission of sin. So even in the darkest events, uh, God is working his claim. Now, as they, uh, dro dropping down to verses 32 through 37, it says, Now, as they came out, they found the man of Cyre, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear the cross. And when they had come to the place called Galgotha, that is to say, the place of a skull, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. But when he had tasted it, he would not drink. This is Jesus. Then they crucified him, divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. 
Sitting down, they kept watch over, over him. And verse 37, concluding, says, And they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And they put that in three languages. They put it in Greek, Hebrew, and Arabic. Moving on to 45, to 45, 46, and verse 50. Now, from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out loud, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the temple and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. So it's a lot of reading. It is a lot of reading. And we only did highlights of it. And next week we're going to study the resurrection, which is a glorious, the Easter glorious story. day. Yes, so the story. we will be touching on some of the stuff that we didn't mention today, this coming week. But we're going to do a few questions. Now, there's a lot of questions this week, but we're only going to take a few of them. And we're going to keep the answers kind of short where we... Uh, don't and, run too long. And we hope you watch the video because the video that's posted online uh, will we'll explain some more of this. This is a long story. It was a long reading. So, yeah. so maybe anyway, the, we do hope you'll watch the yeah, video. Yeah, we really encourage you to read the or see the video. It, it's well done and I think um, it will explain things that we may not have done such a good job. Uh, the last meal Jesus had with the disciple was in celebration of what followed? Passover. Uh, they were Jewish. They celebrated Passover, as do Jews celebrate Passover today and have for centuries. And they were celebrating Passover. And Jesus knew at the time that his friends would never see him as a human again. He, he knew that when he was going into this Passover supper. And as creator of the entire universe, he was, you can imagine, he was thinking the time he was spending with them was going to be an opportunity. He knew so much, how so much he could pass on to them. And remember, the Passover meal was when the Egyptians fled from Egypt and mm -hmm. when this final plague put on Egypt was die, the, the killing of the firstborn. And the Jewish homes that had the blood painted on their doors, uh, the angel of death would pass over. Let's go down to, and Jesus got money, or, or not Jesus, Jesus got money from the religious leaders. How much did he get? I remember them saying he got 30 pieces of silver. Yeah. And that was considered a fair amount of money. Yeah. So you'll hear lots of stories about Judas, uh, but the underlining thing is Judas was greedy. Judas, uh, why he was a disciple, would take money out of the uh, mm -hmm. collections they would get, use it for whatever. Uh, he did this for greed. And, and the, his, go ahead. 
I was just going to say, if you look at today's world, that's one of the big problems we have sure. today. The root of a lot of problems is, is greed. greed. And it's super easy to hate Judas. Yeah. It's super easy. He committed a horrible, horrible sin for very evil reasons. But he's just a man who fell into a temptation. And God used Judas's giant sin to finish out a plan that had been laid, that, he, that God created before he ever created the universe. And this plan that was made, that made possible our salvation was, was a God-made plan to save all of us from our tendency to fall into temptation and sin. And so when we encounter someone who has sinned, should we hate them? No. We sin, we hope they're not going to hate us. We want to look at forgiveness and love for the sinner. We are all sinners. And whenever we encounter somebody who has sinned, we need to, if, we ha if we're having a really hard time talking to them because our human emotions get in the way, and if our heart is not feeling warm to them, we give that to God. And we ask God to um, bring this person close, to, to confess their sins so that they can yeah, be Yeah, because we won't be able to do it on our own. No, we don't have to tell everybody about what they sinned. Our job is not to tell sinners about their sins. Our job is to recognize we're sinners, they're sinners, and the only way we can get past that sin is through love of Jesus Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit. Well, our final question today is, do you think Jesus can relate to the problems that you face and I face today? That we all face. That some of the problems that we seem to face for years and years, things like poverty and pollution and um, being greedy and stealing and and killing each other. Yes, I do think that Jesus um, can understand and relate to the problems. Now, he, he doesn't have a Facebook account, and he doesn't know what it feels like when somebody's really mean to you on Facebook or on other social media or at a baseball game or at a birthday party. He, he, does, he, he does know what it feels. He was persecuted which means people were crazy mean to him. And they hurt him, not only hurting his feelings, not only hitting him or throwing something at him, but they, they hurt him so badly his human body died. And his, in his life on earth, he had the experience of human emotion, every human emotion that we face, whether they're good or bad emotions, and he has a total understanding of how we feel when we feel those emotions. So we always can turn to him to seek comfort and guidance in times of trouble because he is part of the God we worship, but he's the part of the God who experienced life on earth and life as a human. And if we look at this week, and this will be the final comment on today's lesson, is Today we call Palm Sunday. This is the day that Jesus entered into the city of Jerusalem. And he was praised and people were putting down palm leaves in their clothing for him to walk on. Mm -hmm. And that people loved him and just shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. And just a few days later, it's the right. same people were saying, Crucify him, crucify him, because they were not right with God. So what we want to learn is not to work on earthly emotions, but to work closely with our Heavenly Father and let him guide and direct what we do and how we react. Yeah. Sometimes we just got to sit back and count to ten. And why we're counting to ten, we're asking God how we should react to certain situations. We aim for that prayer booth. We aim for that prayer head where we feel like we quiet ourselves down. We try to forget what rock just got thrown at us or what nasty comment somebody said. We settle ourselves. We 
we count to ten, we get ourselves in a in an, uh, an, an um, a mood, a way of prayer. And we do that. That's why we've thought three weeks now on prayer. And it's this so week important. we'll kind of be we'll have a lot to talk about prayer again. Uh, but we hope this lesson shows wow the crucifixion of Christ was horrible and difficult. Mm -hmm. It was God's plan. Jesus willingly did it for us because he loved us. He loved us from the foundation of this earth before any of us were ever born or created because God created all humans. So we just uh, we thank him and we are so grateful that he willingly sacrificed his life for the remission of sins. Indeed. And Speaking I'll, of prayer. Prayer. I'll close this in Thank prayer. You. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we are just so grateful that you sent your son that he would just stand before you and say, Father, please forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. We love you for what you've done, Father. And Jesus, we love you as the Son when you came and took human form and that you were willing to sacrifice and suffer for us because of your great love. And if you can love us so much and forgive all that we do, then we have, have to be able to forgive those who we think have offended us. We should never have an angry thought in our heart towards our fellow man. We need to learn to love those that we come in contact, even those who are difficult to love, and they are people that are difficult to love. And sometimes we may be difficult to love, but Father, through you and through turning our lives over to you and letting your Holy Spirit work in and through us, we can overcome so many shortfalls in the human condition. So, Lord, again, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for your Son. And we thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.